Hi. Welcome to Chavista Chronicles from Caracas. This is episode uh, number eight, and my name is Jesus Rodriguez Espinosa. This week I'm going to talk, I'm going to try, you know, the to make the the, the video uh, a little bit less structured, and I'm going to talk about a few issues that I believe that are important. Uh, I'm going to start with the, the International Chavista Offensive that uh, was performed uh, this week by the leadership of the uh, Chavismo. So first uh, we have to talk about the trip uh, of Maduro to Russia. He announced it uh, as usual uh, without early notice. Uh, and I believe that on Monday or Sunday he said that he was going to leave to to Russia, and the next day he was there, and the day after he was meeting with uh, Vladimir Putin in the Kremlin. Uh, so um, we understand that this is part of the, you know, the alliance. Uh, there, there's not too much information about the about the trip, and I believe that should be uh, because it it is related to security defense issues which are the most, among the most important um, issues that we uh, deal with Russia lately, especially after the constant U.S. threat of use of military force against Venezuela. And I, I reiterate that uh, and I highlight that because you usually hear in the mainstream media and liberal and, uh, of course, right-wing uh, narrative that uh, there is a Russian uh, invasion of Venezuela, which is not true, first of all. I mean, that doesn't mean that there are not Russian people. Of course there are. And they, I believe uh, that under the circumstances, they might, uh, the number of Russians in Venezuela should, uh, is, are, is going to increase because we are trying to strengthen military relations with Russia because we are under threat by the U.S. So it's important to highlight that to try to to, to counter this narrative about uh, Venezuela being invaded by Russians or being occupied by Russians or Cubans or Chinese or whatever. I mean, actually, we have been improving our military and and and, and economic relationship with uh, Russia because of the current uh, international circumstances. I'm talking about the U.S. and and some Latin American and puppet countries uh, that has been threatening Venezuela in recent months. So we have to prepare for that. I mean, uh, any country uh, uh, should do that in, in the situation that we are facing right now in Venezuela. So, but basically, what Maduro one, one most, most of one of the most important things that he says is that uh, there's this uh, uh, strengthening in, in military cooperation, in uh, some investments of Russia, in. Uh, in gold and mining projects in the south of Venezuela. Uh, we have been talking about that for years, maybe, and, uh, and I haven't seen too much, too, too much, too many developments in that area, but uh, I believe that Maduro is trying to push into that direction because we need you know, that kind of investment in order to make, uh, 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 start working in the Orinoco, um, arc development that the government has been announcing for years already. So Russia is a big partner there, and of course China is also another big partner there. Uh, and not only in in these mining projects, but also in military projects. And I'm going to talk a little bit uh, uh, later about that. Uh, also, the Osvaldo Cabello went to North Korea, and that was also unannounced, and, 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 and you have to understand that those things have to be like that because of the U.S. constant threat of uh, 
constant attacks against Venezuela, the leadership of Turismo, and, uh, and everything. So, but, uh, Diosdado Cabello went to North Korea, and he's currently, uh, or at least yesterday, was in Vietnam. Uh, I believe that he might make maybe one or two more stops in other Asian countries, uh, but that information has not been released. Uh, in the case of Gisbao Cabello, uh, there's not too much information about uh, the results of this trip besides uh, the encounters that he have had with the leadership of North Korea and Vietnam. So in that sense, uh, uh, we have to wait until uh, Gisbao Cabello returns uh, in order to analyze the results of that trip. And uh, to end, Vincent Rodriguez went to uh, the United Nations to talk uh, in front of the General Assembly uh, in the name of President Maduro that decided not to go there for obvious reasons. And uh, her speech was great. Uh, she uh, highlighted all the militarism and uh, imperial arrogance of the U.S. At the same time, she uh, make, uh, I mean, she, she make clear the, the intensity and the damage of U.S. sanctions against Venezuela. She also uh, uh, uncovered the lies of uh, Ivan Duque, that the day before Presenta dossier about Venezuela full of lies, even photos that are not real, and, and, and he claims that were taken in Venezuela with, you know, irregular, you know, military groups. Uh, and uh, a lot of media has been saying lately that uh, those photos were taken in Colombia and the Colombian uh, intelligence knew it. So uh, she did a nice job in 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 that speech in front of the United Nations, and I believe that this week, in terms of international relations, Venezuela uh, did an excellent job. Um, it's important to highlight that during the, uh, while Maduro, Diosdado, and Desi were abroad, all the squalidos right wingers. Uh, here in Venezuela, try to, I mean, they, they didn't try, they made, they made a lot of noise in social media asking why, uh, who was in charge of the country and uh, asking people to go to Miraflores Palace, like uh, the, the headquarters of, of the uh, Venezuelan administration, in order to, in order to control, get control of the country, which is very crazy because first, they are the first that says that uh, uh, Guaido is the president of Venezuela and, and, and you cannot understand why they asked to go to Miraflores if they are already in control of the government first. And then they, they, they with this trend that they uh, push in Twitter, uh, because of this situation, and they they make clear that I mean they at least should be realizing that uh, the Bolivarian Revolution, the Chavismo, is not something only related to the leadership. I mean, I mean it's something bigger than the leadership of Chavismo. I mean, the Bolivarian Revolution is going to remain because not only because of its leadership, but mainly because of the Chavista people that are working here every day is regarding the terrible economic conditions that we are facing right now. So I wanted to highlight those two uh, things. Uh, I have to talk now about Colombia and Ivan Duque, and the first thing is the Guaido Gate, Rastrojos edition, which I already talked about that uh, before, but uh, the scandal in Colombia is getting bigger and bigger, and uh, also with this speech of Ivan Duque in the United Nations, the scene is getting worse because in Colombia the scandal about the photos 
uh, that he show in the United Nations blaming Venezuela or supporting uh, irregular groups, that means FARC, ELN, uh, that those are the groups that they do not like because they like the paramilitary ones, the autodefensas, los rastrojos, and those criminal organizations. So uh, the, the biggest scandal is in the Colombian side because of those photos. In Venezuela, we are talking about those things uh, when you read Colombian media, you immediately notice that for them this is, uh, uh, you know, the continuation or the deepening of the, these Rastrojos, uh, Guaido Gate Rastrojos edition. So the situation, I believe, in terms of uh, internal Colombian politics is getting worse for Ivan Duque, and I hope that eventually uh, Colombians get rid of him uh, the best way possible and uh, also um, talking, uh, going back to the dossier presented by, I mean, not to the dossier, to the speech of Ivan Duque, it's important to highlight that the most, the worst of, if you ask him, part of his speech was when he referred to Maduro, he compared Maduro to uh, Milosevic, which is not understanding anything about history. Now, and, and I'm not talking about, you know, old history, ancient history. About, I'm talking about the 90s in, in, in former Yugoslavia. So uh, this guy do not know anything, or maybe just he just follows the script that is given to him by the U.S., which might be uh, what it really is. Uh, and he also compared, uh, I mean, he connected uh, Maduro and Venezuelan uh, Chavista leadership with with Hezbollah and, and the same old narrative, yes, trying to uh, make more noise about uh, those issues that everyone knows that are a big lie, and they, for most of the people around the world, uh, I mean, those things only can uh, provoke laughing. But because we know that Ivan Duque is following instructions from the U.S., uh, that kind of speech raised alarms in terms of what Colombia, I mean, the Colombian government is capable to do in order to please their master in Washington. So we have to pay attention to that, and, uh, and talking about security and defense, uh, it's important to highlight uh, uh, that we received uh, this week a uh, new Chinese radar, top-notch technology. The radar system is not even being labeled. So you can imagine how deep the cooperation should be between two countries in order to uh, try to test new radar systems in a country uh, outside China. So that is what's happening right now in Venezuela in terms of military alliance with China. And also uh, this week we received two planes from Russia with troops uh, connected to all these relationships that we have been strengthening with Russia and that I already talked about. I also, just to see this one, to highlight the resignation of Ricardo Hausman to the to the supposedly being ambassador of Guaido inter, in the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, which in a great way was exposed by uh, Andy uh, Parampil from the Greystone uh, that uh, published a few weeks ago this exchange of messages, WhatsApp messages, between she and Hoffman, in which she basically exposed that the guy was uh, working for Harvard University and at the same time being an official of, according to U.S., uh, a, go a foreign government. So because of that, a few days ago this week, Hoffman sent his resignation 
not to Guaido, but to Leopoldo Lopez, which is the real local boss, because we already know who is the, uh, the, the, the external boss of all these guys here in Venezuela. So that's important news that adds to the decline of Guaido that everyone knows that is a fact disregarding what think tanks, liberal media said about uh, polls and uh, and the numbers that says that Guaido is, I mean, in Venezuela, especially the ones uh, organized by right-wingers, which are the ones that are reading, being read in, in Washington, are usually out of focus and are usually, I mean, not representing really the reality of Venezuela. So it's important to highlight that, that I mean, this event adds to several events, including, of course, the Rastrojo uh, um, scandal uh, that adds to the dossier of Guaido going to another level of, you know, n not recognition. So that's a fact, and that is, that is what happening. And just to finish, I wanted to highlight that uh, we are following in Orinoco Tribune uh, very uh, closely the events in Haiti. Uh, I mean, the media do not is not covering uh, what is happening there, but there is a revolution happening right now in Haiti, and we have to pay more attention to that. And of course, we are following what is happening in Yemen because. Uh, after the uh, drone attacks against these oil facilities and fields in uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, we are starting not to see a shift in the Houthi strategy towards mm, the criminal uh, Saudi regime. So we are keep following uh, events in Yemen, and this is it. Thank you for following us. And, uh, and and please spread the word about the work that we are doing in Orinoco Tribune and about the importance of supporting us. Bye-bye.